Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this week's Lawrence Plays Factorio uh, with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. Uh, and in this episode I'm going to be going, having a look through some of the other things that have been going on while I've been messing around with the Naquium out in deep space. And so the first thing I want to take a look at is Kothar. And this is the planet where all of our Iridium comes from. And Mike has been out here being very, very busy. He's put in another mining area over here. So this is another three patches of Iridite. One, two, three. All, f all, with, uh, all with drills on them, feeding into a uh, pulverizing area up here, which is giving us an output of crushed Iridite that's going into one station and sand that's going into the other one. So that's, that seems to be seems to be working nicely. Uh, and this is filling up filling up a warehouse over here. Now, as I was talking about in, the, in a video a couple of days ago, we, uh, Mike and I have have different feelings on the best way to go in and start trying to and, and moduling up our mining drills. Um, as I was saying, I've been putting in speed modules in everything because the Naquium takes so long to mine up that I'd rather have it go a bit faster. Whereas Mike reckons that it's better to have the uh, the productivity modules in, in in the drills and have and and uh, even if it take even if it means you have to set up a few more uh, mining outposts initially because each one will last for longer. My main disagreement on that one is because things is, is because then the drills tend to be a bit too slow. But he seems to have compensated for that nicely by putting in these speed beacons all. The way around the outside of here and so this is now running fast enough so if we look at let's see where, where's one that isn't covered this one isn't covered this is running at um, 0.2 per second which is as slow as it's possible to go because he's put in so many productivity modules whereas the ones that are being speed modules are running at plus 200 percent so three times the normal speed producing three per second and that's easily enough to keep these belts full and keep a supply coming in over here to be to be pulverized down and I reckon he could probably upgrade these to blue belts and he'd still have enough coming through here of course obviously then he'd need 50 percent more of these machines you need another beacon over here, and it's probably not worth it. Um, but there is, yes, the, the the mining drills, because these patches are quite large, there are enough drills on there that with the with the speed beacons, it's actually producing everything at the at a decent speed. So this is actually this is actually working really well and producing a decent amount of the crushed iridite. I did say in the last video though that I would talk about exactly how the um, productivity boost works. So if we look over here, we can see that these drills have a productivity boost of a plus one hundred and fifty percent, and that's partly from these these modules in them. Each one of these productivity three modules will give you an eight percent uh, productivity boost, and so between the five of them, you're getting a four. 40% boost, but you say, hang on a minute, there's 150% boost there. Well, that's because through all of the other researches we've done, we've got a mining productivity now of plus 110%. And in Factorio, additional productivity bonuses are additive. So you add the percentages together. If you've got a plus 110 from this and plus 40% from the modules, then that takes you up to a plus 150%. You don't get to multiply the two together. And so that means that the, the plus 40s on here aren't actually giving a 40% boost to productivity. They're giving more like a 20% boost, I think. Yes, it's going, it's going Going from a production of 210% to a production of 250%. So yeah, about about 20%. Um, which is, I mean, it's still good. It still it still makes quite an improvement, but it's not quite as much of a, a massive increase as I was thinking it was when I was talking about it in the last video. Uh, that said, the extra twenty percent is definitely going to go quite a long way, and, and will help with the and will help with the production and, and make make the drills last and make the Mac ore patches last a bit longer. Uh, how big are these ore patches? So these ones are. Um, okay, we've got ten million, three million, twelve million. So these are actually really really big patches. These are going to last for a long time, even without the productivity modules. But also. Um, the, we are getting through quite a lot of iridium, so that's going to be very, very valuable having those upgrades in there. He says he's also upgraded some belts to make production flow faster. I'm not quite sure what, whether that's going to be. It could be, could be, maybe, maybe, maybe it's sort of in, in here, just making sure everything gets flowed, flowed through the system as quickly as possible, just to make, make sure everything's working nicely. But he's also improved the dirty water flow rate. So one of these steps, is which one is it? Is it this, this one produces? Yes, this one produces the dirty iridium water. And so I think he was having a bit more of that than he knew what to do with. So he probably put in some pumps or better pipes. And there's a pump in there. Maybe that's maybe that's how he's improving the flow rate. Or maybe there's some more machines up here. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, he is definitely producing a bit more uh, a, bit, a bit more iridium water cleaning. And that produces more of the uh, the crushed iridium through here that can be recycled, along with some stone and uh, and getting the uh, the red red uh, cation beads back around again to be to be recycled. And so ideally we do want to process this step because we get a little bit of the resource back in the, in the form of the crushed iridium and, and, and all we need in exchange for that is a, is a huge stream of the the, uh, the cation beads which we are already making because we already need them for another stage down here. So they're not, uh, yeah, they're definitely not wasted. Speaking of the cation beads, he's improved the production rate of those so there's more machines up here making them. I, I'm I was going to say, I'm going to guess that that's been done with beacons, but no, these are the old beacons, so these have clearly been around for a while. Maybe he's just put in, it's, prob it's probably this area over here where there's some more machines in that are now producing producing the uh, cation beads as well. So there's now, now four blue belts of them coming out, which is 
clearly plenty because the system is very, very happy. And on the subject of mining, I believe some additional, yes, he's put in some additional beacons in around all of the other mines around the planet in order to uh, to make to make sure the the uh, we're producing the ir iridite at a decent speed and then chucking it all into the uh, and chucking it all into the stations down here to be taken away. And I think he's done that on on all of the big mines. So we, we saw the the new one up here has been done. This one down here, yep, this one's had the upgrade as well. Uh, this one down here hasn't. I get, oh no, it has on this it has on this side, but it seems to have it seems to have run out of something. Maybe it's run out of acid. Actually, looking at that, yeah, we've run out of acid over here. So there's a there's a uh, a pipe to nowhere over here. So that that needs to be fixed. There's, a, there's obviously oh, some pipe, a, a section of pipe in the middle of here got knocked out. So if that gets put back in, then this will start to run again, and the system will run quite well. I noticed there's no beacons over on this patch, which is why it's running quite so slowly. And this shows quite nicely the difference between having the beacons and not having them. Over here we've got this bare trickle you can see coming out, and up here from a similar sized patch, well we've got so much coming out that we just can't we can't process it all fast enough. So it does make it, it makes a big difference. And so I think the next thing to do is have a look at the production graph and see how much of a difference all these changes have made. And this is looking really, really positive, credit where it's due. We've had these sort of wibbly up and downy thing over, uh, for five hours ago, so that was, that was probably two streams ago, and then in, for a lot of the last stream it was sort of, uh, there was a bit of noise down here and it was producing it at about 400 and something per minute. And then as everything has come online and started working, bang, it's gone up to this nice steady 920 something per minute. And not only is that higher than it's ever been before, it's also really, really really steady. Yes, there's been a little bit of a decline at the end of, end of it there, but it's basically holding up very, very nicely. Is it almost, yeah, actually looking at it on this scale, it's almost a dead straight line for the last 50 minutes. So that looks like, I'm going to cautiously, I'm going to cautiously say that looks like the Iridium uh, throughput has been solved and has been fixed for the amount that we need at the moment. Uh, with the with the amount of processing we have in the middle here, we now have enough iridium ore coming in that it can run absolutely solidly flat out and has been doing so for 50 minutes. And that tells me that suggests to me that this system is now is now working. Um, especially as um, Mike wasn't around for the end of the last stream, so this has probably been running without him touching it for basically all of that time. And it seems to be working really, really well. Now consumption is almost, is virtually as high as the as, as production. So we've got the production at 933. Consumption is very very steady at about 900, about 786. Actually, that's a bit lower. So maybe this means we are we are, we are going to be filling up the buffers, and then with any luck, this will drop. the The consumption of iridium will drop off a bit once we get all the buffers filled up, and everything is is sort of satisfied and ready to sort of just start start idling. And, it, and, it, and at that point, it's then sort of just just topping up as it gets used, rather than desperately trying to produce enough to keep the machines happy. And so. I think this this looks like we may well have solved the iridium problem for now. Now I'm not going to say it's going to be solved forever because well this is Factorio the factory must grow it'll always get bigger it'll always get more hungry and so we'll probably get a requirement for more of it at some point in the future but at the moment it's doing really well and I'm actually quite impressed. <laughs> We noticed last week that the core mining was had stalled, and that was due to an overflow of water. And Mike's fixed that in a, in a very very simple way by sticking in a, a flare stack over here. It's just going to blow the water off into the atmosphere to, I guess, fall back down as rain or something. Who knows? Normally, I'd be a bit disapproving of that sort of thing of just blowing resources off into the air. But to be fair, this is water, and and this this is a, a wet planet that has lakes and things. So water is basically free out here. So I have, yeah, I've no no problems with that. I think I think uh, just flaring off the water is absolutely fine. And he's also finished off the row of pulverizers along the bottom here that's supposed to be dealing with the core fragments as they come in. So this now seems to be working. There is there is no backlog on the belt down here. There is no um, backlog on the on the belt com on the belts coming in bringing the core fragments in. So yeah, this looks good. One thing I did notice with the uh, with the output over here is we've got we've got the four green belts coming down here. Ah, oh, these these will be the belts he's upgraded. These all these green ones along here to get the um, to get the crushed iridite in. Um, and I, I noticed that there's there's four belts coming in out of the trains, then four belts coming out the other side here, and that normally wouldn't be w would be a bit of a problem because it would mean that in the time when the train wasn't here, you'd run out and it would it would flow through. However, we can notice that these um, all all these warehouses are full, and I believe that's because we have also a little bit of um, crushed iridite coming in from this side as well from the core miners, and also. These belts, actually, these belts are running nearly flat, not quite flat out. Okay, so so yeah, there is there isn't quite the requirement for the solid four belts to be flowing in, and so he's able to build up a bit of a buffer in these warehouses, and the system is working really well. As I said earlier, it's been working solidly for the last 50 minutes, so that's a pretty good sign. It, it suggests that it's going to just keep working quite happily, and I guess that means we've got enough of the enriched Vulcan. Except actually, no, I can't see any of it on these belts. So it looks like we, we've um, hmm, we seem to have run out of enriched vulcanite. That's a bit of a worry. Um, let's have a quick look for some, see whether there's any more of that. There's, okay, there's none in the, um, well, there's a little bit in the train over here. If we look up in, in orbit, 
the there is none there is none being unlo has been unloaded here but the spaceship is gone that presumably means that the spaceship is on its way back there back to norbit or back out here to Cothorbit, and will be bringing a load and when it comes back out here it will have a load of enriched vulcanite with it which can then pass through so how full are these warehouses these warehouses are about two thirds full i hmm I don't know how this is going to go. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that the warehouses will be full by the time the spaceship gets back, and we won't have run out of the enriched vulcanite at that point. And then, and then it'll bring out more, and it'll be, and the system will be able to start running again. And so it's a sort of a, at that point, the limiting factor is the logistics of the, of the spaceship flying back and forth. Um, there is the spaceship on its way back out to, to Kothar, which is down here. So there's a there's a chance that the warehouse might fill up on the on, on while it's still flying out here. Um, but this might suggest that it's time to upgrade to having a second spaceship doing this run, uh, doing the the uh, Norbit to Kothar run, in order to get the enriched Vulcanite coming through uh, more quickly in one direction and to get the Iridium going through more quickly in the other direction. I'm I'm not sure. I think at this point it's not vital to have that. I don't know whether we're going to have enough throughput for it to actually be um, be capable of producing that much. However, this is going to break the uh, the rather nice, uh, almost an hour long uh, stream of, of, of um, iridium being produced because the spaceship hasn't brought out the enriched vulcanite for the next spaceship loads worth yet. So, yeah, I'm kind of... Um, I, th I think it might be a good idea to put in a second spaceship because that is currently going to be the limiting factor on how fast everything can be produced. However, I wouldn't then expect both spaceships to be running at a hundred percent duty cycle. We're not we're not going to be producing the iridium fast enough to fill up two spaceships um, at, at full speed. However, we are producing slightly too much for one spaceship, so better to have slightly too much, I think, in there. Tristan and I spent quite a lot of time in the last stream thinking about resources and throughput and making sure we were making enough of the science and all that sort of thing. Uh, and so the, the, uh, let's take a look at the graph and work our way through it. So uh, well, I'm going to start on the right hand end and work, work leftwards and we'll see how this goes. So he's added in a few extra things. Uh, so along here we've now got all the different types of Vita so we can keep an eye on all of those. Um, we've got both now got both types of um, Immocyte shown, shown on there. And I feel like every time I look at this graph it alternates whether we're short of Immocyte crystals or Immocyte plates. It just seems to be we have a problem. We always seem to have a problem with one of them, and it free and it frequently changes which one of those that has the problem. Naquium. Well, we've started making crushed Naquium. That is a step in the right direction, but obviously we've not made any of that yet, so there's nothing on the bar here. Arcospheres are mostly there for future proofing. Uh, there's there's lots of them, and we don't have any of any of them yet. Uh, okay, that's fine. The Iridium is sort of ca hold, holding on a little bit. We've got a bit of that coming through, so that's quite nice. Holmium's still struggling. These three still fine. But it's mostly the science I wanted to have a look at here. We saw quite a lot of shortages in the science area around here, and now all of these do seem to be fixed, which is quite nice. So let's let's run th let's run through what we got up to. Firstly, up in Norbit, I was having issues with the uh, cooling for the um, for the thermofluid for the for the astro science. I talked about this quite a bit last week, and I had a couple of suggestions of ways to uh, to, to improve it. And then I got some more suggestions in the comments saying. Don't run another pipe, just put some pumps in along here. And that does seem to have worked. I've, I put in pumps all the way along the middle pipes, all the way, all, all, for the entire run, all the way along here. And yeah, we can see that at least some of the radiators are, are currently running. And if we look on this side, yeah, we've got full, full, in, now we've now got full input pipes, full output pipes, and it looks like everything is working really nicely. We've got 80,000 in here, which is the amount that this, um, uh, this pump is set to try and keep these tanks at. We've got full tank, basically full tanks down here. We've got lot. We've got not a huge amount up here anymore. We've got. We, we, this has brought this back down to twenty, uh, about thirty thousand, which is probably where we want it to be. And so yes, putting all, all of the all of the work I did over the last couple of streams has now has now sorted this area out, and we have we have a suitable amount of of the, all the thermofluids available. Um, and now that it's helped a little bit by the fact that the astro science has gone to sleep, and so we've been easily able to catch up. But I'm sure that over time, it'll it'll we'll, we'll be trickling it through a little bit and, and and using it up gradually. I did put in some more machines along here to make the tier one astro catalogs a little bit more quickly because Tristan was doing huge amounts of astro related science, and we were just absolutely ripping through them. Uh, that's calmed down a bit now, so this is now a bit overkill. But you know, I'd rather have too many than too few along here, so that's definitely helped here. It's kind of hard to tell at this point whether the uh, the coolant cooling is is fast enough or not. I think we're going to have to wait until until the science really kicks in doing astro related sciences and then just and see and see how it holds up there. But I think it's probably going to be okay. We sh but we shall see. <laughs> 
We were also still short of space science. That's these very, very basic science packs. Oh, actually, very, very basic. It's the first of the space ones, so they're not that basic, but they're more basic than the rest of the space. I, I don't know. So I, we were running short of them anyway. So I, I fixed that by simply putting in, an, by doubling the machines, copy, paste, job done. No, really, really easy. We now can we can now produce these twice as fast as we were before. And as you can see, we've now got a, a nice, healthy backlog of all of these. None of the belts are running. The belts are all, uh, they're all full all the way up here. This is working really, really nicely. Similarly, Tristan increased the um, production science, which is, uh, no, sorry, the utility science, which is the uh, the cyan ones over here, or turquoise ones over here. Uh, and the main limiting factor for these was the uh, machine learning data cards. Now, okay, that's it. The main the, the main limiting factor when a speed beacon was put in here with loads and loads of speed mods, making these machines run really, really quickly, then the limiting factor was the rate that we could get the machine learning data in at. So he's just put in more and more and more computers and probably more machines make, and we're just using the thermofluid for that. Uh, the cards go round and round, so that's basically fine. Yeah, this seems to be seems to be absolutely fine. So you just need more, more and more and more computers to make more and more and more of the of the data cards. And as you can see, we are still using those at a bit of a rate. The, the, we're filling the belt up up here, so we've only just caught up down here by the looks of it. And down in the matter science area, I made some improvements down here, which again seem to have worked really, really nice. We've got a huge uh, throughput has flown through here, and we've got we've got we've got the uh, catalogs backed up all the way along here. So that makes it look like we are doing really, really well. Uh, and I did this by putting in some more machines along here to make the magnifying glass data. The imperial data was limited by uh, the panda data that's coming in from the uh, from energy science. And so Tristan did some upgrades up there to make that come in a bit quicker. And so that's now caught up nicely. That's, that's looking good. So these two never seem to never seem to have any problems, I don't think. Or at least if they did, it was problems caused by other inputs. Oh, no, wait. No, the, the, the microwave bacon data up here was limited by the, the rate we're producing the superconductive cables at. So I've just extended this by quite a long way. I think before it only came out to about here. So I've probably roughly doubled it. Um, and mm, some of these machines aren't working. And I'm... Oh, Oh, this this one isn't working because oh oh yeah, there's lots of there's lots of broken pipes along here. This clearly needs sorting out, so I'll, we'll do that next time um, and try and get this up and running again. So this yeah, this robot port is in the wrong place. It actually needs to be at least one square further to the left, so that then all of these so this pipe will then line up and then we can link it along here properly. So that's a bit broken, but uh, at least it's a fairly, it's going to be a fairly simple fix. Actually, no, this this machine here, this machine is too close to this one. It should be two more squares across so they're not butting up against each other and to fit the rest of the pipe system. So actually the better way to fix it is probably just going to be get rid of that machine and its inserters and probably its pipe as well and its exerter and then put in a single piece of pipe there and that will then and then, then we'll be able to flow the thermofluid through here and we'll be able to use all of the machines rather than just the, the handful that got put in. So that's going to, yeah, that's going to help a bit and we'll get the, uh, get, the get these get these running a little bit faster. Not that we actually need it right now because we're not doing anything that involves matter science but at some point in the future we will be so we'll definitely need them then. Okay, Tristan says that the, uh, the fix on the panda data down here wasn't something he did last time. It's something he did the week before because this was another coolant related problem. So he said he upgraded a load of the radiators here to the tier 2 ones which makes them faster and put in more hypercoolers and that means he's now got a healthy supply of both the, of the uh, super cooled cold and cool and every, everything is now at the right sort of level and, it's, and okay we're feeding a lot of um, cables through here but everything is now at the right sort of level everything is working and he's so he's able to produce the science cards for me to then take them and turn them into the into the matter science as well and on the subject of cooling, he's done the same over here in the science park. So we're due to the, the, the increased speed we've been doing science at recently, which is at least partly due to getting better modules and therefore running these machines and upgrading these to a much higher tier um, types of labs, we are now doing science much faster than we were before. And that means we're ripping through a lot more coolant. And so Tristan expanded the uh, coolant system down here, again, in exactly the same way I was talking about. Uh, we seem to have a power shortage over here, so I guess we need some more of these in. Um, that said, I mean, I say there's been a power, there's a power shortage, but we seem to have enough of the coolants that things are... Are. Things are working, so I guess it's not that much of a crisis, but you know, you might, I feel like I might as well finish these things off while I'm at it. And finally up here, he says he's fixed the uh, the rate we're improving, sat we're doing satellite launches at. Um, I, I guess that might be these speed be speed the speed beacon and all these modules here. Um, yes, this one was placed by Tristan, so I think that's probably uh, probably he's put these beacons in here uh, and the uh, and not these modules. It looks like that was me who uh, put them in, but the beacon will then make this go a lot faster, and so we'll be able to launch the satellites a bit more quickly because apparently that was a, a limiting factor for some of the sciences we were doing. I was going to say that down on the ground we've had uh, we also had some problems with throughput which we've now all solved. However, it doesn't look like that's actually the case. Um, so I, I did some upgrades over here. These are the blank tech cards that are used for making all of the the basic uh, science packs that are made down on Norvis. And so we've got 
we had here, we had a yellow belt coming out, and that was just, and that was woefully insufficient. Uh, these machines turned out were fast enough, especially with a beacon uh, but right behind them like this. Um, but it was just this belt was limiting everything. So I upgraded this to a blue belt, and actually, to be fair, upgraded all these inserters to green inserters as well to get a bit more throughput from that. And um, that dropped them down onto here. And from there, we were then able to produce enough red, green, blue, and every, every, red, green, and blue sciences, which were the problem ones. And it turned out it was literally just the input of the um, of the tech cards that was the problem. So with that sped up. All of these then started working absolutely fine, and we had massive, massive backlogs of them. Um, however, we've now run out of iron, and so that has stopped being, being the case. We see, okay, we still got some blue ones, but the, uh, the reds and the greens have completely run out. Uh, so we're going to have a look at that in a moment, but uh, for now I'm still talking about, still just talking about the sciences so, and, and what I've done there. Um, so we'll carry on with that for now. But yes, I upgraded um, along here a little bit to get, to get everything working nicely. One of the big upgrades we did need was over here with the blue tech cards. I had to upgrade the, uh, the the rate we're putting the glass in because if we have a look at the recipe here, uh, yes, it takes five blank tech cards to make five of the uh, of the chemical tech cards, but it also takes fifteen glass, and that's that's quite a lot of glass. So we, we, we the uh, the belt was no was wasn't remotely fast enough to bring in it bring in the glass in at the rate we needed it. Again, because we'd up come along and upgraded it with a beacon over here, which is doing goodness knows what to the speed of these machines, uh, and so adding in the uh, adding in the the blue belt here and the red belt to feed it has meant that's now running. Fast fast enough. So these are the sort of things that you go and you go, okay, I'll drop in a speed beacon. That, I'm sure that'll help everything. It'll make things run really, really quickly and we can get all of, all of everything we could possibly need out of it. And that's true to an extent, but then you have to also think about the inputs as well as well and whether they're fast enough. And and, uh, and we hadn't done that and so that. So it, uh, it just pushed the bottleneck back, back a stage or two. The other interesting one over here was the grey science, the military tech cards, because those require this um, bio stuff, this biomatter creep that uh, that's, that appears underneath bi biter bases. So when you take out a biter nest, you get a large area of this, this creep that you can come through and you can, you can pick it up with the bots. So I could, I could slick, stick a deconstruction planner over it like that and the bots will fly out, they'll pick it up and they'll bring it over for us to do science with it. And but that is a limited resource, of course. Now the the biters will generate more of it for us, as you can see down here. They're uh, they're they're busy producing it, um, and so if we carry on expanding, there is always going to be more of it for us to for us to acquire. But that requires expansion, and the factory is not actually expanding down on Norvis very much. Now there's quite a lot of it down here, and I did slap a big deconstruction planner over a big chunk of it down here, and then got booted from the game because that was too much for the uh, for the system to cope with. Uh, but when I came back in again, it was getting gathered up, so we had a fair amount of it, and so. But that is now why we have um, lots of it available in the system here. Now, actually, we've ripped through all of what was pulled up from there. Conveniently, there is also a warehouse with it in up here. There's another 23,000 in this warehouse. And it turns out that Mark had been had started producing it um, in other ways as well. So over here, we have these uh, bio labs and these work a bit like a bit like greenhouses in that they will take in um, a certain they'll take in some petroleum gas and oxygen and then they'll grow that into biomatter for you that you can then use to, to do the uh, the science production so this is all going to work it fairly self-contained we've got the the oxygen what was it um oh no we need we need to bring it sorry we need to bring in petroleum gas but basically we, other than that we have the oxygen being put pumped out pumped out in here and then we can make grow the creep and then we, that's being fed over this was originally being produced to turn it into fertilizer which i think mark needs for biological science but he also put in a train to uh, pick it up from here probably i imagine this was a lot of forward thinking because he was aware that at some point we were going to need it for the gray science because we weren't going to have an, an actual infinite supply of it from the biters but for whatever reason he did it i'm very very glad uh, so we can now have a station here there's a station here that has loads of it in and then when we start to run out of it down in the science area uh, down here, here. Uh, we can then pull a train in. It can drop some off, and it can it can fill up this warehouse when as as and when required. Uh, that's not going to be required for a while because there is twenty three thousand in here, and we run out of data cards. But eventually, we'll get to the point of starting to need some of it. And so, with all of that, we've got all of the sciences, as I say, are looking happy. Um, we may be a, bit, a little bit short of some of the uh, tech cards on on the ground, but the, we're, we're measuring it, we're measuring the buffers up in space, I believe. And so that's why these all still seem to be quite happy. So we we do have time to fix this problem before we have any issues with uh, with not being able to do any more research. We also have problems with some of the resources in the system, as you saw earlier when we were looking at the blank tech cards and discovered we'd run out of iron. Uh, but this episode is getting rather long, so I think I'm going to have a look at that a bit later on in the week. There aren't going to be any streams. That this week because I'm busy in the theatre all week doing backstage stuff so unfortunately I won't be around for any streams but there'll be another video for catch up from the previous stream probably coming out on Thursday to give you something to tide you over since there'll be no stream on that day. So I hope uh, to see you around for that and then again next week when I'll be back as normal with the satisfactory stream on the Tuesday, the Factorio Space Exploration Crastorio 2 stream on the Thursday and of course the normal videos on the Friday and Monday. So as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.